This is the BBC Micro. It was developed by Acorn Computers for the British Broadcasting Corporation at the start of the 1980s as part of the BBC's computer literacy project. The project was a government-backed education initiative designed to introduce the UK to the principles of computers. By the end of the 80s, the BBC Micro was being used in over 80% of schools in the UK, and along with the associated television programmes and materials that were produced as part of the computer literacy project, it helped to introduce a whole generation of children to the potential of computers and the power of coding. And speaking as one of those children, I'd say it was pretty successful. It certainly helped to build my interest in computers and data in the first place, and subsequently led to me taking on a career in IT. If you're interested in finding out more, there's an online archive of the Computer Literacy Project available that contains well over 200 television programmes and clips, and over 100 BBC Micro programmes that you can run through the online emulator. I'll leave a link to the archive in the notes below, and thoroughly recommend taking a look. And now, 30 years later, we have a spiritual successor to the BBC Micro in the form of the BBC Microbit. Again designed by the BBC, but this time with a whole host of partners, including Arm, who interestingly are essentially the company that Acorn Computers went on to become. The original prototype was first shown back in 2015 at the launch of the BBC's Make It Digital campaign. Much like the original computer literacy project, this is an initiative intended to encourage a whole new generation to pursue a career in computing, electronics and software. As part of the Make It Digital campaign, the BBC announced an ambitious plan to give away 1 million microbit devices to pupils in the Year 7 year group of UK schools. Despite some problems with the development, this was achieved in 2016 when a redesigned BBC microbit was delivered to Year 7 pupils only a few months later than originally planned. Much like the original BBC Micro, the microbit is now helping to teach a whole new generation of children the basics of computing, coding and electronics. So, what exactly is the BBC Microbit? Well, it's not a computer in the sense that the BBC Micro was. You don't need a keyboard or a monitor for it. Instead, it's a small board that's powered by an ARM microprocessor and you can easily program it via a PC, a Mac, or a tablet, or even your smartphone. So let's take a look at it in more detail. Okay, so let's start with the back and the heart of the board, and that's the microprocessor. Uh, this particular one is a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 microprocessor, which, uh, which is running at 16 megahertz. You've got 256 kilobytes of flash memory and 16 kilobytes of static RAM on board. And it also has 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth low energy for wireless networking. Uh, so you can communicate between microbit boards. Down here we have the compass. This is a three axis sensor that tells you the direction in which the uh, microbit is pointing. And it can also be used as a metal detector. Down here we have the three axis accelerometer sensor. Uh, that can detect movement within the board, so whether it's tilting this way, that way, uh, or whether it's also in free fall or not. Up here we have the micro USB connector, That's, uh, so you can plug the micro bit into your computer, but you can also use that to plug in a battery pack. Uh, we have a reset button here. Uh, this isn't a programmable button like you'll see on the other side, this is used to uh, reset the board. And we have another connector here for a battery pack. This is a JST type uh, connector. You can also connect power using these two pins here. Uh, or, or you could connect power uh, using the pins on the edge connector as we'll see uh, on the other side. So, flipping it over. And you can see here our two programmable buttons. Uh, these are sort of tactile push buttons uh, and these can be used within your programs to interact with the board and then we have a 5x5 five five array of red LEDs uh, here. Along the bottom here we have a 23 pin edge connector uh, this is used for the uh, inputs and outputs to the micro bit board uh, five are of the larger type that you can easily connect to using crocodile clips or banana clips and the others are smaller pins that realistically you would need some form of edge connector uh, to plug onto those to connect to them. So here I have a socket with uh, with a breakout board. This particular example enables you to connect the pins uh, on your micro bit to components on a breadboard. Uh, this particular example is from the Kitronic Inventors Kit, uh, which gives you this along with some components and some projects for you to try out. So here I have uh, an example of one of the projects that's uh, in this kit. Uh, this is a very simple one, it has a red LED that's wired in series with a resistor uh, and then into the ground and one of the pins on the micro bits edge connector. Uh, that's coming through this breakout board here. And, and I've written a very simple program that when I press button A, 
gives me a message on the uh, LED array on the microbit board itself to say that the LED is coming on and then it will flash the LED on and off and then I can then switch that off by then pressing button B again get a message this time to say that the LED is going off and once the message is finished scrolling across the LED will stop flashing the micro bit can be powered in a variety of ways uh, it can be powered using an external battery pack which I have here and that's just connecting into the JST connector that we saw earlier uh, or you can connect using a micro USB battery pack connecting into your micro USB port there or you can connect the power uh, using the pins on the side that we saw or all via the edge connector along the bottom so here I have a, an example of a board that you can buy that contains a, a coin cell and is then connected to the micro bit board through the edge connector along the bottom here so it's just screwed in and then this particular one gives me an on off switch that I can use to power on and off the micro bit board. When it comes to programming the micro bit you have a number of choices but I recommend you start off by heading over to the microbit.org website and then clicking on the let's code link that you'll find on the home page. Here you'll find options to program the microbit using blocks or JavaScript with the make code editor that's been developed by Microsoft, or you can program it using Python with a Python editor. And this uses a, uh, a cut down version of Python called MicroPython, which has been specifically designed for use with microcontrollers. You'll also find links to a whole host of third party editors, including Scratch, EduBlocks, and Workbench. And for the more adventurous, you can even program the microbit using C or C. In addition to the editors that you'll find at the microbit.org site, there are also some offline editors available on the Apple, Android and Windows stores. And as I go through in this series of videos, I'll be taking a look at the various editors that are available in more detail and showing you how to use them. I'll also be taking a look in more detail at the buttons, the LEDs and the sensors on the microbit board and showing you how you can incorporate these into your programs. I'll even show you how you can connect two microbits together using the onboard radios. And of course, as this is Data World TV, we'll take a look at how you can capture data coming from the sensors and use it as data source for your reports. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to you joining me on future episodes of Microbytes. If you enjoyed this episode of Microbytes, then let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and giving it a like. If you want to see more like this, then hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to make sure you get notified of when I add new content to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch.